What's up guys, it's Theo here at Real Experience Ball Reviews. If you haven't had a chance, please click the like below, like and subscribe, love y'all. So I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm always going out using my 4K camera, everything has to be pretty, blah. Don't care anymore. Um, I wanna get some more natural content on this channel. Uh, you know, workouts, like what kind of stuff am I doing to stay in shape? Minus my finger injury. Obviously can't help that. Today I'm just gonna show you guys some of the leg workouts I do, some of the core strengthening that I do to stay in shape. So I go to Snap Fitness here in Allendale. So, you know, kudos to Snap Fitness. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, I love the, the trainer here and the manager. They treat me really, really well. So let's get on inside. Let's get some workouts in. Let's have a little bit of fun. Um, but again, let's talk about, you know, why we do these workouts to stay in shape for bowling. And also, I don't know, life of Theo and a day at the gym. Yeah, it's super beautiful out today. It's like, I don't know, the 70s in Allendale. So, this is where I go, Snap Fitness. So, all right, so typically I start um, most of my workouts with just like a walk on the treadmill, uh, it gets me loose. That's kind of where I'm going to start. Let's just do like a walk for about three minutes. That just loosens up the legs. I just kind of put it at like three miles per hour speed, something kind of stable. Get your, get your heart rate going a little bit. Typically, I'm on here for about. I don't know, three or four minutes, and then that's my warm-up. Typically, too, when I'm doing these, I try to have, like, somewhat longer strides. It just kind of stretches out the legs a little bit more, gets them working, so. Okay, that's pretty good. So, four minutes. Four minutes on the treadmill. Nice little walk. Start it out. So typically before I start most of my workouts, I come in here, so this is like the aerobics room. Um, I usually do some foam rolling on the legs, then I do some just some stretches uh, before I actually start doing some of the lifting. Uh, so today again, we're just focusing on those legs and the core. I don't do a whole lot of upper body stuff just because it, I feel like for me, it impacts my bowling and my two-handed game, so I just focus on the core and the legs. All right, so it's always important. Um, before I work out particularly, I love to use the foam roller. Um, I feel that if I don't use the foam roller, like I'm just a little bit tighter and also loosens up those muscles. So you can see here, I'm kind of doing it both on uh, my IT, IT bands on both sides, both legs, and also the front of the quads there too. So make sure you hit those front quads. Um, I really like the one they have here at Snap Fitness. It has those ridges. Um, if you lift really heavy, and you use this like post leg, you're gonna be like, oh my God, this thing sucks, but you'll love it in the end, trust me. And then, so another great stretch, uh, knee to chest. So anyone who has really tight hips, hamstrings, legs, quads, anything, glutes, this is really gonna be a great stretch for you. Um, a really good stretch too, before you go to the bowling alley or when you're at the bowling alley, before you bowl, just some really good stretches in general. Um, but this is the stuff that I do before I work out at the gym. This one here, it's called the uh, Cobra stretch. This one's really good for the lower back. So just be very, very certain when you do this stretch, right? That you kind of tighten uh, the glutes and the legs uh, a little bit, you know, like and tighten that core when you do it and lift up. Cause if you don't, you're gonna pull a muscle. So uh, this is another one that I really like. Um, you know, I kind of go and do these uh, kneeling hamstring stretches. So I don't do a whole lot of time on these stretches guys. So I'm hitting maybe I don't know, 15, 20, 30 seconds, um, like one set for all of them. Because when I go into lifting, I don't want to be, you know, overstretching before I lift because that can cause problems. So also, I apologize for the lighting in here. It's a little bit dark. So, uh, yeah, that's just how it is. But I've been having some pain in my TFL. So I've been working on some of the movements to help strengthen the TFL area, which is actually kind of the side of your hips. Um, I had hip surgery back in 2016. Uh, I tore my labrum. So I always try to make sure those hips are strong. So today we're gonna kind of start pretty basic. Um, and I'll kind of show you guys what I do. So I'm a huge advocate for uh, hip abduction. These two machines right here, 
So that kind of works. Um, the inner thigh, and of course your outer legs and then IT band. Um, I personally find this really useful. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna kind of go back and forth with each workout. So I'm gonna utilize both of these stations here. So what I'm gonna do, um, I usually do like, I don't know, eight to 12 or 10 to 12 reps uh, times three. So I get about 30, 30 like reps in total. And I try to go at a pretty good, pretty good weight here. Something I can manage with something where I'm not like feeling like death, <laughs> you know? So about a hundred pounds. I usually grab this and that's about 105. So we're gonna do um, probably 10 reps of that. And we'll preset this over here. This one's a little bit harder for me just because I'm having some TFL pain. But I usually set this around 100 as well. So we're gonna start there. So with this type of workout, you really wanna focus on engaging that core. You know, no, don't hunch over, you know, um, engage those legs. Uh, you're really gonna feel it in the inner thighs. Um, I'm telling you guys, you know, doing these workouts, strengthening the, um, the inside of your legs and the outside of your legs is going to be really important. We talk about that foundational aspect of strength. Um, these are really awesome. So again, I just do like, you know, three sets of 10, three sets of 12 around there and I feel pretty good. Typically, if I'm doing strength workouts, I do like about a minute rest in between sets. Um, and then I got my handy dandy Garmin here to uh, track that. So this is so weird doing a video for YouTube for our channel at the gym. People probably think I'm crazy here, but I don't care. So it's interesting to provide something different than just bowling content. So, so we're gonna move on to this next machine here to that one minute hits. Do the same thing again keep that core tight you notice uh, in that last workout right when i was kind of in that decentric movement right when i was kind of going back eccentric and i'll say it here in the title but i try to go really slow on the way back because i feel like that strengthens those fibers um so just nice and steady and uh keep your core tight and obviously just good posture matters too i wouldn't be hunched over trying to do this workout so And again, vice versa, I like to go in between. So like once I'm done with one set on the other uh, hip abduction machine, I wait that minute and then I go to this one. So I kind of alternate each set. So in total, you're getting like, I don't know, 60 total reps. Um, and that's, it's a pretty good workout. Um, again, choose a weight that you're comfortable with. Don't overdo it. Remember, no slouching, you know, stay firm, stay athletic and just trust yourself. Feel that here, that TFL, that IT band. You work in those that inner, those inner legs and the outside of your legs. So you want the whole structure to be strong and sound. That way you're good and you're comfortable and you have all the strength you need. So I just did 12 sets times three, like 36. So I did 36 total. So my legs are feeling pretty good right now. So always to stay hydrated. So I usually carry a water bottle with me. A liquid IV is really good. Um, but yeah, those are two really, really good exercises for like the inner legs, like the inside of your, your thigh there. And of course, like that IT band and the TFL. So we're gonna go more of like kind of overall glute strengthening. And um, there's a couple different things I like to do. I love just doing you know, squats with kettlebells. Um, they also have the leg press, but I'm trying to take it easy today because uh, I have a pretty big run tomorrow that I want to hit. So I'm going to kind of go and do some kettlebell squats and try those out right now. And I'll show you guys how that works. Well, Snap Fitness is like, honestly, one of the coolest places you can go. Um, in Allendale, I mean, Allendale is a really small town, so I got lucky at kind of being here. It is college season, so a lot of things are just starting up. But you can see here, they got all the weights you can choose from. They got the lifting area, you know, if you want to do just kind of the not using any Smith machines. You guys see a guy over there doing some rows. 
Um, they have mirrors so you can really watch, you know, and pay attention to your to your stance, making sure that your form's good. But uh, yeah, I come here all the time. I've been doing a lot of running. I haven't been coming as much as I want to, but now that I'm doing more kind of strength training stuff, I'm going to be coming here more often. So let's go ahead, grab that kettlebell, 25-pound uh, kettlebell, and let's move into some uh, movements for squ uh, the squats that we're going to do here. So again, uh, you know, kettlebells, awesome. You can use a regular weight too, but I like kettlebells. They're just easier to hold. So the goblet squats, right? So you really want to just kind of focus on, you know, sitting back um, and you don't want to be hunched over. You can see my legs are uh, slightly hip width apart. Uh, I really harp on that because if you like kind of go and do these squats and your legs are like together and they're pointed in a weird direction, I mean, you're just going to prone yourself to injury, which we don't want that. We want to be strong. We want to be healthy. Um, you may even notice like your bowling slide, when you get into your slide, you do a lot more of these squats. You're going to be like, holy crap, dude, like a lot stronger, a lot more powerful, um, at the end of your slide. Again, this is a bad example, so don't do that. So I want to show you guys like, that's not how you do the squats, right? So look how I'm kind of sitting. Right, so you got guys maybe tell you oh, you're bowling or whatever, like, hey, sit back sit in a chair. Same kind of concept, right? You don't want to be leaning forward at all. And again, if you start getting tight and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is tough on my lower back, right? The pigeon stretch is one of my most favorite stretches of all time. Um, when I was doing the Allendale CrossFit program, pigeon stretches saved me, like, especially if I was doing like really, really like long sets with like squats or, or deadlifts or just anything in that lower back. It just, these are literally a godsend for stretching. So all you bowlers out there, get to those pigeon stretches because I'm telling you, they are awesome and they will loosen you up. Okay, now that we did those, those are the, go the goblet, goblet, whatever the hell they're called, the goblet squats. Those are really, really awesome, guys. So if you do like a bunch of those, even in the morning, you don't even need weight. You just wake up and you just want to like get your body moving a little bit. Doing some of those squats in the morning, it's awesome. So uh, so now we're going to focus on the, the like kind of isolation of single leg. I really harp on this because this is something I had to do a lot uh, after my hip surgery is like really strengthen and isolate, right? Like each leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, some hamstring curls. Um, and we're going to use a specific machine that you can do kind of one leg at a time. And again, it's not about how much you can lift. It's about how smooth, about how it feels, making sure that your body is comfortable. So always listen to your body. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a trainer. This is just stuff that I've done. Just kind of stay in shape. Um, and what's helped me like kind of feel good when I'm out on the bowling lane. And just in general, you know. And just remember, if you have back pain, there's about a 90% chance that your legs are weak as hell and your glutes are super, super weak or they're just really tight. So anybody who's complaining about back pain, make sure your legs are strong um, in kind of all the different areas. And even those calves, I mean, strengthen that entire area, right? Because we're trying to strengthen the foundation of your core and your legs. So let's, get it, let's give it a whirl here. Same thing, I'm probably gonna do uh, three sets of 10 per leg, that one minute kind of rest in between sets. All right, everybody, moving into that single leg hamstring curl. One of my all time favorite workouts to do. So talk about that foundation, making sure those hammies are strong, those quads are strong. And then that actually helps lower back pain. I will tell you doing this does help my lower back a lot. So just setting up here, making sure everything is uh, set, situated properly. Where I put my hands right there, where I'm showing you is where you should be having the edge of that seat. Don't have it on your kneecaps. That would uh, not be a great experience to have uh, for your workout. Movement here is gonna be explosive up and slowly down with that eccentric movement. So again, um, these eccentric exercises can help increase strength and your muscle bulk and be safer for people with like, I don't know, tendinopathy and arthritis. So just letting you know though, if you do this a lot, you can sometimes get DOMS, like the delayed onset muscle syndrome. So if you're doing a really heavy weight and you're doing the eccentric movements, like just be careful, like listen to yourself, listen to your body, you know, don't overdo it. Just, you know, take care of yourself. And you can see here, just going to the other leg, same thing. So kind of complete um, 
you know, three sets of 10 maybe with each leg and you're all set. Again, those rest periods can vary. So I will tell you if you lower the rest periods, so if you do like 30 seconds I and mean, you're, it's probably more of like that burning stage. Whereas with that um, minute rest, that's more of like just gaining a little bit more strength. So. Okay, so we just finished. So we started with, you know, those TFLs, uh, you know, the, uh, we got the, the both sides of the legs there. We got the, we got the hamstrings, we got a little bit of the quad, the core and the hamstrings doing those goblet squats. And we have like the single isolation hamstring exercises. So one thing I really want to do right now is go to the machine uh, and the uh, leg extension. So that one's going to be uh, really healthy for just strengthening your, um, your quads so it's funny you might like 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 me i started running a lot and then i didn't realize like my, my quads are actually kind of tight they weren't getting the the love that they needed so my runs have gotten better by doing more lifting so you guys i'm pretty sure you've seen this machine before all right we got to work those quads right so one of my favorite ones to do as well is that leg extension so setting up on this <clears throat> make sure you pick a weight that you're comfortable with doing I'm going to do like 55 pounds on this. Um, so you can see here, I'm still kind of utilizing that uh, eccentric movement on the way down. Again, we're going to do that 8 to 12, uh, you know, kind of set range, three sets. Um, personally, I love this one. Uh, give you a nice burn. And uh, if your quads are like tight or they're weak, you'll start to like shake a little bit. So keep that in mind. That just means you're working those muscles. So. A lot of stuff that I like to do, and again, you probably, oh, there's all these other leg workouts. Well, yeah, no kidding, there's always other leg workouts. You can watch all these fitness channels. Like, I watch a lot of Jeff Cavalier, Athlean X. He's pretty cool. There's so many things you can do. So, again, if you have any workouts that you guys love, you know, what are you doing to kind of stay in shape? Again, I'm a runner too, so I run three days a week. I'm training for 5K kind of stuff, so I've been really working my quads, but. Yeah, so that's some of the stuff that I do. So now that we did a lot of the isolation exercises, right? So one thing I've been trying to work on too is my calves. Um, not every gym has something that kind of strengthens the calves, more of an isolation kind of workout, but there's something here at Snap Fitness that I find really awesome, really effective. Uh, something that I've, you know, it's helped me kind of strengthen my calves and my running. So again, the foundation is usually what helps, right? So. Let's take a look at that machine. Ah, uh, yes. So the calf raises, seated calf raises. I did a lot of these um, back when uh, I used to do a lot of lifting back when I was at Oswego. These are really awesome. They actually help you with your running too. So keep in mind for here, I'm doing the single leg calf raises. I have like 15 pound pounds on there. Um, but I'm just doing again, you know, that eight to 10 rep range. Uh, just being very mindful of the positioning of the foot too. Um, where you can almost feel like you're getting a stretch, but you're also kind of working that calf. That's when you know that you're really digging in and hitting that muscle the right way. And again, we're making sure we hit the other leg too. So unless you have some sort of injury, I like to just kind of do the same weight on both. Again, this will help with overall stabilization for that entire leg and ankle support as well. Okay, so obviously I'm just saying this like, did a lot of great workouts, guys. I think that was super effective. Again, yeah, there's there's squats, there's you know deadlifts, there's all that kind of stuff. RDLs, like, okay, uh, today I'm just not doing that. So this is just what I'm doing today at the gym. Uh, it's kind of like a workout, uh, weight training wise, what we're doing. So now we're gonna kind of go into the aerobics room. Um, you know, grab a quick quick sip, a sip of water today, and then uh, do some abdominal work. And I'll show you guys some really, really cool kind of circuit work that I've been doing with the abs that have been super effective. But before we do that, there's one more workout we gotta do that really focuses on the lower, lower back with the Roman chair. So the Roman chair, um, so again, this one, make sure that you keep your hamstrings tight, like make sure like you're utilizing them because if you do this workout and you don't kind of like tighten your hammies and like really focus on the core, you're gonna blow your back out. So um, let's take a look at this machine. So if you walk into Planet Fitness or any of those fitness places, you're gonna see a Roman chair um, typically. These are awesome, but doing these properly is really important because if you're not doing these right, you're gonna 
really pull a muscle in your lower back. So you can see here, I just showed you like a bad example of the height. I wanted to show you that. So make sure it's low enough to where you can kind of go all the way down. But the focus here, right, is focusing on, you know, tightening your abs, tightening your legs, tightening your, your, um, hamstrings your glutes and everything as you go down like you would not want to go down and just lift with your lower back that's not the point of this exercise you're going to notice so when i do a movement here pay very close attention i am tightening my hamstrings a lot when i do this and i will tell you take the breaths too make sure you take breaths when you're doing this because if you don't you can get lightheaded and get woozy this is going to be really 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 good for your lower back your legs and your core so again, breathing is super important, but I think this is one of the most effective uh, exercises for strengthening your lower back and your hamstrings. Okay, so according to my Garmin, we've been here for around 50 minutes, 45, 50 minutes. So there's all these studies and all this blah, 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 how long you work out, how long you work out. Dude, if you just come to the gym, I mean, you're here for 20, 30 minutes. Well, it's better than the one person who doesn't come to the gym. Right, so don't focus too much on like, oh, I have to, you know, do it for this long, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna get all these comments. Oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool, but I find for me most effective, like 30 minutes to an hour, right? Depending on what I'm trying to achieve. Again, I'm not a professional weightlifter. I'm not a power lifter. I come here to be healthy, stay in shape. Um, and also it's good brain fuel. So brain fuel is always good. All right, so we're gonna move into some more of uh, these abdominal workouts. We're gonna do the planks, I like usually do those. Planks are awesome, they strengthen pretty much everything. Uh, you know, 45 seconds, uh, three sets of that, um, and then we'll probably move on to uh, some other abdominal workouts. So again, uh, abs are great. Um, helps you kind of be steady and you know, post those shots. If I'm not posting a shot, something is wrong. Everyone that knows me that watches me bowl, I post like everything, even if the shot's crap, well, I'd rather post a shot and know that I posted it, you know, for good execution. Let's try out these workouts and we'll see how they go. Some of my favorite stuff to end with is doing some abdominal work. So planks are awesome. So there's, again, there's a bad position. I just want to show you guys what the bad position look like now. This is a good position. So everything's kind of level, tighten, tighten your core, take deep breaths. It's almost like you want to like sink in, you know what I mean? Like you really want to like push in your abs and tighten them as you do this. Typically for me, um, so work your way up, you know, uh, for a while I couldn't do more than like 45 seconds, right? So now I'm doing 45 seconds to a minute or even longer. I usually do three sets of that um, with like a 30 second break. So I don't take like super long breaks in between my ab workouts to kind of make it more of like a circuit training uh, sort of workout. This is something I do usually post um, running and also post lifting. So we're gonna do uh, the next one is abdominal, like, like the, just the leg raises. Um, these are great. Um, these can get really tough when you start like maximizing on like how many you can do within a certain time limit. Um, for me, I mean, I do like 10 to 15 reps um, or if I put like a timer on, I see how many I can get done in like 30 to 45 seconds and just kind of go at a rapid pace. So another really good one to kind of utilize, strengthen your core. So this one, um, the dead bugs. So this one, I'm telling you guys, if you have like severe, like lower back problems, again, I'm not saying if you have a really messed up back or if you have like a disc problem, like don't go ahead and do all these workouts and say, oh, Theo told me to do this. I'm just saying like, you want a really good foundation for a strong lower back and good physical conditioning, dead bugs are awesome. For this workout though, really focus on like pushing your abs like into the ground. I know it's gonna sound weird, like you're laying on your back, but you almost wanna feel like you're pushing them into the ground. And again, Taking those deep breaths is always super important during this. So moving into the stretching phase, um, I know Snap Fitness has um, a lot of these stretching things here, uh, like straps put on your legs. And I just kind of showed you right where I'm going to be stretching right on those hamstrings and those IT bands. So notice here how I'm just kind of gripping this thing, pulling it up, and I'm just grabbing that, having the other leg lay as flat as possible, take deep breaths. I'm telling you what, you will be sweating and you'll be like, oh my God, that's a hell of a stretch, but that's why we're here. And typically what I'll do is I'll kind of just give it 
I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds. And then I'll kind of gradually, um, you know, start to pull that to the side. So you're going to see here after I hit that movement, I started to kind of pull it in different directions. And then eventually I move into um, a kind of like a sideways movement here. So watch this. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm gradually kind of stretching it more and more and more going into a deeper stretch. Um, and then again, full crossover. So I kind of switch hands and that really gets that lower back. It gets the, uh, the hammies, gets the glutes and just really targets uh, stuff specifically for those legs. The next stretch I like is kind of just grabbing your hip, grabbing your legs, it's called the hip rocker. I just kind of go back and forth, kind of resets the hips a little bit. Pull that one leg up, drop it, it's about 10, 15 seconds. And then what I'll do is I'll grab that leg and then push it over. That strengthen it, that's the strength and it stretches your lower back and that entire kind of oblique area and your hips. And you're gonna feel it all around there and that's gonna feel real good. I usually try to sit there and just take deep breaths. Um, find that to be super effective. So some of these yoga poses are really good too. So like the downward dog, you know, just kind of sit there, rock back and forth, right? I always find it super effective. Um, if you ever heard of yoga, like the vinyasa poses, I know Nike uh, Premium App, they have a lot of great yoga stuff, so check that out if you haven't had a chance. And here's kind of just the breathing exercises, kind of with the spine. Let's go in and out. So making sure that everything is comfortable, making sure that you're kind of refreshed, you're ready to go. And then from there, typically I pull myself up a little bit. I mean, I would say, yeah, I'm working my abs and my shoulders a little bit, but again, I'm just kind of kicking back and forth. And then what I'll do is I'll put one leg down and like make it kind of straight I and mean, lift with my the back of my heel there. And that really gets deep with um, your hamstring stretching. So again, so if you are able to do this, definitely kudos to you. Um, it's really awesome after a long session at the gym. And we're going back to those, you know, kind of kneeling hamstring curls. I don't know. One of my favorite stretches to do seems to be pretty effective. So obviously I'm doing something right. And to end it off, I'm doing the 90-90 stretch. Um, really good for the hip flexors, hip capsule, and your lower body foundation of just making sure everything is um, nice and loose. You kind of get, you kind of pull up there and you kind of just twist with your upper body. Don't over twist. Don't try to twist your entire body and snap your lower back. Just relax. Take those deep breaths. And then of course, you know, for every single stretch that I just showed you, again, making sure that you're hitting both sides. That way you're getting equal de-stressing um, on all of those muscles. So I really hope you guys, you know, enjoyed this uh, video. And, of course, going back and forth between the uh, voiceover and then the uh, actual in audio. <laughs> no, I hope you all enjoyed that uh, video, the training video. Uh, me just going to Snap Fitness. It's some of the stuff that I really like to do to stay in shape. Um, yeah, so hopefully I didn't know anybody taking videos in there. There was like barely anybody in there. But there's no way I'd be able to do that at Planet Fitness, man. There's just too much people, too much commotion going on. So, uh, you know, drop a like, uh, comment below if you enjoyed these workouts. You want me to continue doing these? So. And always remember, always remember, folks, if you want to get in shape, you have to make the difference. All right. Catch y'all later.